All right, what is up, guys? Joe Scalise here with the Noble Gwentry, bringing you guys Deck of the Week. And this week's Deck of the Week is a budget crush on crate deck. And I, I noticed that a lot of people out there talking about budget decks, seen a lot of things, people posting about the cost of the game. So I thought I'd bring you guys a competitive deck that also doesn't cost that much scraps to, or that many scraps to build. So for those of you that don't know, this is Crush on Crate. He is a four strength unit and his ability is play the highest loyal unit in your deck, strengthen it by three and then damage it by one. And you're gonna use this with Morkvarg. Morkvarg is a silver epic. Whenever this unit is discarded or destroyed, it comes back and you weaken it by three. So basically, whenever it goes to the graveyard, it comes back into play immediately, and he just has three less strength. So you play Crash on Crate, he gets you Morkvarg, boosts it up to 11, and then damages it by one down to 10. So you get 14 points, and then if Morkvarg dies, let's say at the end of the round, you get a eight strength unit at the start of the next round, and that's pretty good. So we'll just go through the deck as usual, looking at the bronze units first. We have Savage Bear, damage in each enemy, played by one. Pretty basic, but very important. Not only is this good against kind of the swarmier decks, things like monsters, it's really good against Celiano Harpies, because it kills both eggs, and then it does one damage to both of the Harpies when they come into play off the eggs. But it's also very important against Nilfgaard. I would say that right now, you cannot play... A, any Skellig deck, any Skellig deck in the game without the Savage Bear because it stops Vivicaro Medic, which, and Vivicaro Medic will get a whole bunch of things off you. It will get the Bear from Raging Berserker. It'll take a Clan Tordrock Shieldsmith. It'll take an Archer. There's just too many good things for them to hit. So being able to use the Bear is essential. I found that three was a little clunky, but having two seems to be the sweet spot also, Clan Bork, Brockvar Hunters. The names are going to kill me in all these videos. They really are really out there names. Clan Brockvar Hunter. So it has a veteran, which means it gets stronger each round. So round one, it is a five. Round two, it is a six. And round three, it is a seven. You deploy, you damage a unit by three. And that's pretty good. That's a good tempo swing. It can be used as removal. But the real reason it's in this deck is because of its ability. Strengthen it self by one whenever an adjacent unit is damaged. That is super important because of weather. Being able to play this on a row with weather to kind of soak up some of that weather damage is very good and allows you to conserve your first light and your Gremist for later on in the game. Very, very nice card. Now, you could easily run three of them. I teched in one Raging Berserker, and uh, Raging Berserker is a six-strength unit. When it gets damaged but does not die, it becomes an 11-strength bear. And the bear can be resurrected, which is really nice. Also, this is pretty good. You can play it directly into weather. And that's very strong. Another very strong card is the Clan Drummond Shield Maiden. These three cards are very good. So they are three strength unit. And they have veteran. So there are four in round two and a five in round three, which we'll get to. And that's pretty insane. But basically, you deploy it and you damage unit by two. And if that unit was already damaged... You get another one of these out of your deck, and then they can shoot for two again. And if they hit a damage unit, you get another one out of your deck. So you can chain them for insane tempo swings. They are 15 strength bronze, essentially, if you hit all three, because they each do three plus the two is five. That goes up in round two and even more in round three. They also thin your deck. Very, very useful cards. I would say if you're running a Skellig deck these days, you want to take a look at the Shield Maidens just because of how powerful they are. Then the last ones are pretty much staples. Priestess of Freya, resurrect a bronze unit. You usually end up resurrecting your big clan Brockvar hunters, but you can also resurrect the bear from Raging Berserker. You can resurrect a savage bear if you're worried about your opponent doing things in the last round, like swarming the board or playing Vivicaro Medics. And then you also have clan Tordorok Shieldsmith, another veteran card, so five, six, seven. Deploy, strengthen the unit by two. And so that's basically... It's different than boost, right? You're giving the unit base strength, and you're going to use these on Morkvarg to get him up as much as possible, but if he's not in the game, you can also use them to hit other things. Because it's strengthened, they're always going to make your Priestess of Freya stronger throughout the game. Really no downside. You want three of these. And then finally, there's one first light, just because Ragnarug is so prevalent right now on the ladder. Now, moving into the silvers, you have to run Morkvarg, right? 
And one of the things about the silvers is I think the silver spots are pretty tight. There's not that much room for variations because you have to run Morkvarg. You have to run a lock. This can be Cleaver. I prefer Donar Ahindar because I think his ability is pretty nice. Not only can you pull bronze cards that are valuable to your opponent, you can also pull out strong bronze cards that you can resurrect with Priestess of Freya, which is really nice. But this could easily be Cleaver if you have a Cleaver or what have you. You just need a lock. And the reason you need a lock is because you need to be able to unlock Morkvarg in a lot of games. right? Your opponent will have that one lock to shut down Morkvarg. Donar comes in, he unlocks it, and now he's just in the game forever. That's very important. Sigdrifa is probably the one of the silver cards you could cut. I just really like her utility. Not only can she resurrect all of the bronzes, but if Morkvarg gets locked in round one, you can res him in round two, which is really good. And she resurrects Gremist. And Gremist is one of the best mages in the game. So not only is he a clear skies, like all mages, he can also get you fog if you want to be aggressive with him. Or, and much more often, you can get Blood Curling Roar, which is a special card. It destroys an ally, and you get a 12 strength bear. So you can use that on the one cost Priestess of Freya. You can use that on a damaged unit. You can use that on Morkvarg. There's so many uses for the bear that Gremist is a huge swing. And then the final two silvers, I, right now, am running Scorch. And Scorch is a complete tech choice for anybody who wants it. I just have seen a lot of dwarfs, I've seen a lot of ethnic control, and I've also seen a lot of reveal Nilfgaard. All of those decks like to play huge units, and using Scorch to be able to kill them has been vital. It can be a bit risky, because you are going to have units that have a lot of strength. If you don't like that risk, or if it's not fitting your style, this could easily be a different silver card, like Hogar Blackhand is a very good card to put in this spot as well. Has a lot of utility in your deck. And then finally, Decoy. You have to run Decoy. So this is a start, a special you start the game with. Return an ally to your hand, strengthen it by three, and then play it again. You gotta have Decoy. Look at all of the things that Decoy hits in this deck. Uh, it's good with the Hunters. It's good with the... Uh, I'm sorry, with Donar Ahindar. It's good with the Priestess of Freya. It's good with the Shieldsmith. Gremist, Sigdrifa, and then finally, it also takes a lock off of Morkvarg while also buffing him. So let's say you have a Morkvarg, he's a 12 strength. Your opponent locks him. You play decoy, you pick him up, you put him back down. He's now a 15 strength Morkvarg, and he no longer has that pesky lock. So very nice. And then the golds are all pretty straightforward. You start out with three of them, so because it is a budget list, right? So we've got Ermion, draw two cards, discard two cards. It's deck thinning. He's a six gold. He can help you find that one card you really need, which is really nice. Royal Decree, pretty self-explanatory, but if you don't have enough golds for a deck, Royal Decree is always a fine option. It basically means you're playing two of every other gold that you have because you can go and find them, which is nice. Triss Marigold, I love Triss right now. I know a lot of people see Triss. Oh, she's a starter gold. She's not that good. She's a seven body that damages a unit by five, and there are so many units running around that have five strength that she just gets so much value over and over and over again a great tempo swing a lot of power and then this last gold slot i'm running zoltan animal tamer and what he does is he summons a parrot either field marshal due to companion or field marshal due to agitator and either this one boosts four things that are adjacent on your side by two and this one damages four adjacent minions on the or units on the other side of the board by two so a lot of utility there. It's a pretty big tempo swing. You can do a lot with him, which is really nice. But this slot could be anything. If you have a Skelly Legendary like Coral, like Halmar, like any of those, you can slot them in instead. I just like Zoltan. You could also play... Uh, you could even play Geralt. I just dusted my Geralt because I didn't like him that much, or milled my Geralt, rather. I was not a huge fan of him because I'm never going to use him, but... You can run Gerald here. You can run any gold you want in this last slot. And this is the list. This is the deck. It is a budget Crash on Crate deck that I think is pretty good. I think you can climb the ladder pretty consistently with it. It has a lot of powerful interactions and a lot of powerful tools because all of its strength is in the silver and bronze cards. So that's why I think it's a good choice. And uh, we'll see how it plays over on the ladder. I'll see you guys over there. All right, guys. Game number one. Playing a little budget 
crush on crates. I went back and forth with what budget I wanted to do. I want to do a budget for every class, but I think budget crash on crates one of the best. If you want to start off with Skelly, I respect nothing human. For Skelly's glory. This is going to be a tough matchup. It is. So we do want the Scorch. Uh, Ethne is almost assuredly going to be Ethne Control, and they usually depend on their spell guys. So we want a Scorch for that. We're going to hold on to that. Obviously, we don't want to keep Double Shield Maiden, and we don't want Mork Vag. So we'll run Mork Vag first. Got Ermi in. That's pretty good. We don't want a Shield Maiden. Everything else looks pretty good. The bear is solid. We don't need double priestess. We can try to get rid of a priestess. And we got Tress. So we have a pretty good opening. Unfortunately, we are going first. So if we're playing against Control Skellige, which we pro I mean, uh, sorry, Control Skoyatel, which we probably are, we're going to want these cards for the end of the game because a lot of their ending removal, things like Ragnarok, things like Skellig Storm, are about doing damage about taking people down and if we can keep these golds and scorch for the last turn we should be all right so we're going to lead with the bear here it's probably just going to die i don't expect the bear to live oh that's why that's so loud let me tune my sound here all right portal practice fine i think we just want to bring out the well we can't quite bring out the Maidens in the way that I want to yet. So, we'll just Mork Bag. Let's go. Oh, Mork Varg. Really? There's an R in there? I've actually never checked that. I always call him Mork Bag. Mork Varg. Still a sick card. You'll regret your mom ever squirted you out. I'm sure I will. So he's playing the Hawker support. We're just going to go in with this. Our shields are our ramparts. Their shields are our ramparts. Our shields are our ramparts. That's a pretty good swing. Gonna put some pressure. We want him to ethne before round three, so we're gonna try to do that at some point. I expect a skeleton Let's get storm. This over with. What is that? really Gerald? I'm not really sure what to think about that. All right, we'll just play the shield smith. So what? Should I pound it into a poker? We do want to watch out for a lock on Morkag. He's buffing as well, so he might have Bran, who is annoying. Not the end of the world, but is annoying. We can play a Priestess of Freya if we want to. We don't really have any good resurrect targets in our hand anyway. We get a bear back. That also helps us keep on pressure. I don't want to pass here because he wins round one. It's really bad for us. Modern Freyr is patient, but she but brooks, she brooks no, insult. no insult. That is true. She does brook no insult. We could have also Ermiand, I guess. We we don't need all of these golds, although I try to preserve them if possible. This is one of the problems of losing the coin flip. It's just kind of how it goes. We also need to stay out of CRN range, right? Because if we're if we're within eight points and he CRNs our Morkvarg, like we're pretty much dead. So we don't have Sigtree for anything. We do have Gremis though, and Gremis is gonna be really important for this game because he can clear Ragnarug, which is going to come up at some point. He also has a the Scorch is also good against whatever he's been buffing in his hand. I'm assuming it's a brand. For those of you that don't know, she's the Dryad that when she comes into play, she does damage. You'll regret your mom ever screwed you out. Unit equal to her attack, and so you just buff her up with these things, and then you do like, you know, 14 or something. Which is why the golds are so important. We also want to save Donar Arhindar if we can help it. Uh, I think we just go with Zoltan here. And we'll use it on our own guys. That's more value because we get the bird. I will put Zoltan here. <laughs> we'll use the happy bird. Helpful bird goes here. Right. We did set up an Igni, but they don't usually run Igni. It's not like a card this deck. Although the guy is running Geralt, so we have no idea what he has in his deck. But I'm assuming Brian is on his mind. He hasn't played any spells, which is very suspicious in an Ethne deck. He's only played First Light. 
He also is playing these, so maybe he's not playing Ethnic Control, but I still want to hold on to the golds, if at all possible. Although he is wearing us down a little bit here. This is one of the problems with having like a super efficient uh, deck, like with a lot of good cards in it. It's just you get these weird situations. Now like is the time of the sword and axe. Okay, so he's using already using Ithlin just to swipe this row. Doesn't seem like a great use of the card, to be completely honest. Okay, 3528. Unfortunately, that does keep us out of reach. Ugh. We have to watch out for the lock. The lock is so key. And now that he can see RN and lock in one turn, that's just not going to work. So we need. The Scorch is also a dead card right now. Maybe we do play Ermian. We could also play Gremist, kill this, and get a 12, but then it sets us up for his Scorch. Which wouldn't be the best thing. I don't really know what, we, what we'll even discard here, though. Like, we don't want to discard any of our cards. Like, Gremist, I guess we could play Gremist just for... Fog, maybe? Maybe we, like, fog the back row. I really don't want to set up a situation where his Scorch gets double value against us. Gods. Not a moment's pace. I'm going to fog the back row. That seems fine. Like, if we, if we make a bear and then he has 12, and it, it's just going to feel bad. We know one of the two of the cards in his hand can be buffed by Hogger supporters. We saw that when he was pulling them out, which means that he probably has a... Okay, so he passed. And as with any Morkvag deck, or Morkvarg deck, we are just going to hold pass back here. There's no reason to invest any resources into this board. It's a pretty good draw. And we got the light. So the light's actually pretty nice, just in case. You always want to watch out for that Ragnarug at the end of the game. These are all pretty good. Donar is not great, but we can always discard him later with Ermian. And we're just gonna pass to open up the open up the round, I believe. But this will give us card advantage. If he does have CR in, he has to use CR in on Morkvarg, and he has to play another card, so we're fine with that. He would go down two and a half cards in round three, and against Ethne, that's all we really care about. I imagine he'll probably just if he has Brand, he might use her right now. Just to take the tempo or just take it in one one go, but then also he Brand! Yep. There she is. Just one so unfortunately, he did get to keep his ethne, but I didn't want to pressure. I think having the last name is better than having the... Like, I'd rather have card advantage going up against ethne than I want anything else. And that was a perfect draw. Priestess of Freya is really good. We can use it for uh, a couple different ways. We're going to hold on to the first light. You still never know if your opponent is going to. Ideally, we get Sigdrifa off the army, and yeah, we always gotta watch out for Ragnarug. So. I never miss. Okay, so he's playing like this nonsense. Morgvard could very well die here. I don't know how dramatic that is. Like, I don't think we care about it all that much. It's just a one strength at this point. We could try to buff it with a graveyard. We can go into our graveyard, get the shield smith. And maybe that's what I want to do. Maybe that's the best play. Just right off the bat. This new shield smith. The problem is that it does play into what does Ethne have in the graveyard? It has lacerates and first light. Our Scorch also might be a dead card, so I don't want to Ermian just yet. We can also play Triss Marigold. I think Triss is fine here. Yeah, this is actually really tough. I don't know what the best play is. I just don't think we care about Morkvarg that much. I think it's better to Triss. It might give him some awkward turns. I see strong magic. Like, this is just the kind of stuff that he doesn't want, right? He doesn't want me to play golds. Unfortunately, we only have one gold, but 
Nature's gift in the last wish. Peace with humans. So this scorch is probably gonna be a spicy one if I had to guess. I don't think our lock is gonna do that much anymore, so Donar is probably getting discarded by Ermian. I think we just do this. This seems logical. Modern Freyr is patient, but she brooks no insult. We'll take the shield smith. We'll buff a more guard. Just in case. You never know. Uh, we do know he has the last rate in his graveyard, so we want to watch out for that. He probably has Rote Shaskia, so we have to add 17 to whatever his score is, which is kind of annoying. We haven't seen a Ragnarok yet, or a Skellig Storm, so I don't know. We might ditch the first light when we play Ermian. I think Donar and Ermian are on the chopping block. And this should be a Saskia. No Saskia, no so he is also playing a budget deck, it would appear. Uh, he was running Geralt, so I guess we can expect that. Kind of interesting to see a budget deck. We're currently at uh, like roughly 1800 MMR. So interesting to see a budget deck this high up, but pretty cool too. Okay. So we knew this was coming. Whenever you play a special card boost, okay. So these should all be the same, right? Like, that's how it works. They're always the same. So this is going to be really good. Uh, we'll do Ermi in here. Just more gold cards. Well, actually, we can do a Protector first. And we're going to use... When we use the Hunter, we're going to put it in the back row. Right? 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, we're going to put the back row. It's more things. I promise you a quick death. And we're going to shoot this instead of this. Because if we shoot this, obviously, it can throw the other ones out of whack. Which we don't want. We want them to be equal. Look what the werecat dragged in. Yeah. I guess Ermian's probably gonna be just oh, Ermian no. this game. And we take a first light. Yeah, we don't want any of this nonsense. He might have another trapper. If he does, he does, I suppose. Kayadmel and Shay. Why are these different? How how do these get to different strengths? Whenever you play a special card, boost self by one wherever this unit is. Wouldn't that mean that that unit... How are these different? I actually have no idea why these are different in power. That doesn't make any sense. Play army in here. Ugh. God's protect us. Royal Decree is absolutely useless. Um, and we're choosing two to discard, right? So this and the first light can probably go. We'll use him to buff Morkvarg probably. Why are they all different strengths? I do not understand this at all. He has Igni, he has Igni. I mean, we could have played around that, but I have not seen evidence that he would have Igni. And we lost. Did we lose? I think we lost. I don't know. Oh, we did it! Whew, we pulled it out. I am not great at math. Why are these... Whenever you play a special card, boost self by one, shouldn't those always be the exact same throughout a game? I don't know how they're different. I don't understand it. I don't play that deck. But we did win. And that's the important part. So. Discard. Or not discard. Budget crush on Craig takes game one. I will see you guys for game number two. All right, guys. We're back with game number two. We're crashing the budget. Playing. I really want to do a lot of budget decks. I know a lot of you guys out there are not. Have a full collection. And there's cards you don't have. I also, there's a lot of cards I don't have. And I hit top 400 and closed beta so i had about 60 kegs to open i bought some more still long way to go so we got royal decree um we're going up against ooh crush on crate that is not good for us the mirror match is not something we want to see but we are gonna get rid of work value here Triss is good that means our royal decree is a guaranteed ermian the bears seem really strong having two of them in round one 
It's a really good way to put pressure on our opponent, get a lot of free. We're going to keep Gremist, of course. Triss and Zoltan seem good. I want all the golds. And Decoy is a good way to stop Morkvag from being respawned. So I think we just throw a Shieldsmith out. Clan Broke or a Hunter. That's a fine card. And we'll just keep it like this. We are going second. Always good. Um, unless we're unless he plays a bear. If he leads with a bear, obviously that's not great for us. I think we're gonna go bear bear into Morkvarg, most likely. He's gonna lead with Morkvarg. That's fine. We have no lock for our opponent's Morkvarg, that's always unfortunate. Um, going second is nice because if he like passes here, he wouldn't, but I if he did. Oh, he's also playing Triss. And Roach. All right, well, we have we have to work Varg immediately. Otherwise, we're gonna fall too far behind in tempo. Glory! I've seen Roach in this list. I guess that's another consideration uh, for a silver slot. I just think the silver slots are really tight. I don't know if you'd want to be. Hey, I'm gonna do that. I don't know if you'd want so to be Should running I it into a poker? cards like Roach. I think it's a little slow, but there are just better silver cards, in my opinion, that you could put in this deck. So we can Triss here for tempo. We could also play the Hunter. Uh, the Hunter puts us within eight, which puts us within 12. What is it? Nah, yeah, it should. 37, 26, plus 10, yeah. Cool. So that means Triss wins us the round if we want it, which is exactly what we did want. We want Triss to be right there. Um, we could have gotten aggressive this round and Priest is afraid our bear, but I don't really like that play. We can also... Royal Decree, Ermion, and try to find Donar on Hindar, or try to find one of the Shield Drummond. Wow. Billion barrels of burning pitch. It's an aggressive. Uh... So, six gets us to 32, which puts us out of Triss range. And that's really unfortunate. But. Uh, that's really unfortunate, but I don't think we have a way to get within Triss range anyway. I think if we lead with Triss, it could throw him off, maybe? We play Triss, and then that'll scare him into playing another card. We could also just follow his lead, play Decoy. The problem is, if we play Decoy, then we're like out of locks for our Morkvog. I still think this is fine. Oh, what? Should I pound it into a poker? Should I pound it into a poker? So we, we still are out of trust value, but this should scare him into doing Look, something. God's protect us. Okay, so we're now we're going to counter Ermion. So this is one of the things we do feel like we're one step behind right now, and I think it's because we are one step behind, unfortunately. The turn one bear getting Trist really took away our tempo. But we do want Ermion here. We'll see what he discards, and then we'll go from there. A shield maiden. All right. We'll get Ermine going. Put him here. God's protect us. So we have a scorch, which actually isn't terrible. Let's scorch this way if we want to. Uh, Clan Borkvar Hunter is very good. The bear doesn't seem like it's going to be as strong. We really want to get a shield maiden at some point, though. Let's see. We want to discard... I guess we want to keep the Freya. We'll get rid of this, and we'll get rid of this. Freya is basically both of those cards, so that's completely fine. If he passes here, he passes here. 
I wanted to be up one card, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. We have 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, we only have 12. Just just out of range of what we want. Although we could fray uh, into a Borkvar that's not going to be Oh, Skellig Storm. While well, we weren't paying attention. We could trust Marigold here to eat um, a good chunk. Basically eat the end of the Skellig Storm. I think this is fine. We play Triss here. She's on the third. Uh, guys. How can I help? Okay, uh, we want to kill Roach. We don't want to kill either of these. We don't want to leave anything damaged. If we can push him further this way, it should be all right. We don't mind our Morgue Bag taking a hit of damage here and there. We could have also Gremist to clear this, but I think that's a little premature, especially because we can use Gremist to get a 12-point bear, which is always going to be good. Our Morgue is vulnerable to... Unfortunately, our Morgvarg is vulnerable. What? Oh. Let's get this over with. Another Gerald. Uh, is vulnerable to a lock. Another Gerald. I have seen a lot of Geralds running around, and I don't know why, especially at this rank. So, I mean, we just played against a deck. The Ithne deck also had like some suspect cards in it. It seems odd to me. Either way, so we have a choice here. We can just pass. His Morgvarg is bigger than ours, so he'll be able to pass back. But, so we can play Priestess of Freya, get a Hunter, play it here, but I think it's better just to let this round go. We got him down to three cards. We have card. We're not going to have card advantage going to the last round, but I don't know how much that's going to matter in this matchup. I, I don't think the card advantage is going to be as big of a deal as it may seem. Armor card is four below us. Two. Oh, that's it. Oh, I didn't realize we were that close. Okay, we have the first light, but we've also seen all four golds, I believe. Gerald, Ermine, and Triss, and Royal Decree. Which means we don't need the first light. Although we we do want to aggressively mulligan for a shield maiden. There we go. The shield maidens, when they have veteran, when they've boosted themselves, are insane. If you can hold on to these until the last round, we can like combine them with Zoltan or something. We just go off. If he just wants to pass here. Bow before modern Freya. Okay, so he's gonna resurrect with the nine. Out with the crowns. Come on, quick now. So we're gonna need a push here. And that push is going to look like this Raging Berserker, maybe. Play the Raging Berserker, we go from twenty-six to eighteen. And then we can uh we have a nine shield smith. That's just fine. That'll keep pace. We can't take the lead here no matter what we do, right? We're down by 14, so it's better just to do this. We serve her who is virgin, mother, mother, and, and crone. Out with the crowns. Come on, quick now. Just want to limit. Just want to keep the Morg Vargs as close as they can be. Just take your advantage down to as much as... It, he doesn't have any golds left. We do have to watch out for Donar. He's already Bow seen Trifa, maybe. Freya. Billion barrels of burning pitch. Okay, so we have a pretty good swing here. We can actually... I think we can take Tepo from him. Uh, seven puts us to 31 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, that actually takes Tempo in a pretty cool way. Ooh, the question is, though, would I rather just save the Clan Drummonds? We play Gremist here instead. That's definitely a possibility. No, because if we, if we do this, we play Zoltan, we hit these... 
we do get tempo back, but then we may lose our ability to use the shield maidens. I still think that's right. I still think we want to get tempo. Although Grimmest also gets us tempo. Ah, not you again. We'll put that here. Yeah, I'd rather save the Zoltan uh, Shield Maiden combo should we need it for next round. We're down four on the Morkvarg train. Seems fine. And we're up three now. We may need to use Zoltan this turn. Uh, Gremish just has a lot of use utility. He already used a Skellig Storm. So we're not worried about that. I mean, he could have Aromancy, but we have pretty good protection against that. He also can't Ragnarok because he's already used four gold cards, which is really important. He could try to just... Let's... All right, well, that's going to make us, unfortunately. We have no choice with that one. We have to keep the tempo. We're going to have to Zoltan here. Double chase! Um, Angry Bird. We want to do the Angry Bird because... It triggers our shield maidens, should we need them. Um, we're also going to have to get rid of Scorch. The Morgvarg is just not going to... Scorch is just not going to hit Morgvarg at this point. Enough gold flopping. Oh, God. That really sucks. Guess we just play the bear. Coming to get ya. That's... Probably game. We do have an advantage, but we need Donar or Hendar. It's pretty much our only draw here. If we can Donar into a Scorch, we'll be fine. Hide your stench. Wow. That's pretty good. Although we can't do anything with the Shield Maiden, which is a problem. Nothing's going to be wounded. So the question is, do we want to Donar, or do we want to look for something that can do damage? This is why I wanted to save Zoltan. Donar plus Scorch to deal with one card. We didn't get it. It's really unfortunate. Calm yourselves. We had... I think that Mulligan is right, because we have... Uh, I think we have double Priestess draw. I just don't think anything's gonna take damage here. We have, we have double priestess draw in our deck, I'm pretty sure. And you're good. You're he's running good. Queen's Guard. Jesus. So what? Should I pound it into a poker? Unfortunately, we still lost. Unless this thing does damage to itself. Give them no rest, no reprieve. Oh. Oh my God. That may have just given us the win. Game, can you do the thing where you shoot the thing? Just need to. There we go. Now, all together. That was a close game. I first of all, why is he running Queen's Guard? This guy is. I'm not making this up. It's not like I'm secretly playing in casual. Like this is pretty good. <laughs> A little laggy on the servers from CDPR, but still, I cannot believe we pulled that one out. I thought we were dead for sure. And I still think that Mulligan's correct because we had options to do damage, and the damage is going to be worth more than the Scorch. Some good game. We continue to move up. Did we hit? Did we get it? Hey, we got it, level 19. One level away from that sweet, sweet random legendary. And we are back to 1,800, a little over 1,800 ranking points, which is awesome. Still a ways away from 12, but we're getting there. Anyway, we're 2-0. I'll see you guys for game number three. All right, guys. We're back with game number three.
Hopefully we can do the 3-0 sweep. That'd be a pretty cool video for a budget deck. There's still a lot of uh, switches you can make in this list. It's not a final list by any means, but if you check out the write-up on my website, you can see some things that I suggest. And also, of course, I suggested some things back in the game play, game guide, deck tech video that I do at the start of every single one of these. You one piece. Fight for it. And we got Henselt. We have just like a, a weird smattering of also why does it say I'm level 18? Didn't I just go to level 19? I don't know. The servers are buggy. That doesn't matter. We gotta play against Henselt. We gotta prepare for it. So Tris Marigold, very good. Donar Ahindar is fantastic. Most Henselts today try to do the Reaver Hunter combo, which I covered last week. And using this to lock one of the Reaver Hunters takes away their trio. Grimace, good as always. The Shield Maiden is strong. It's a good early push. The Royal Decree, of course, is great because it gets us either Zoltan or Fermion. The Freyas are all right. I don't like keeping too many of the Freyas early. This is a better smattering of different minions, or units, rather. And that's pretty good. I'll say minions, I'll say units. You guys know what I'm talking about. Stand and fight. Nice okay. mess you've got here. So this is very uh, interesting. I'm going to use the... So I can use the bear or the hunter, but basically the way the, the Koidukade Wenny Sergeant works, it boosts all units with the same power as this unit by one. So when you when you play the next one, it's going to be a four. So if we can do damage to these, it makes it so they don't get buffed, which is pretty important. And I think Savage Bear is probably the way to go. We could also just go straight out and plan a Bork Bar one of these, which also is fine. We want to set up the Clan Drum and Shield made in tempo, if at all possible. And we also have Triss. So we have a lot of plays here. I think it's better. If we're going to get Savage Bear value, we want to do it now. And this is going to get a lot of value, uh, especially in the first round of this game because of the way Hensel plays. They just like to flood the board. And the bear will fly. So that's gonna be a Reaver Hunter. Almost, almost assuredly a Reaver Hunter. Yep. So that is unfortunate because it lets him get off his combo, even if we silence one of them. So we want to look for a decoy at some point. But for right now, we will just do this. I promise you a quick death. <laughs> Knock that down to one. Makes it so there's less things that he can buff when he plays other sergeants or tries to go off with the blue stripes thing that's always annoying Samaria. yeah so this is one of the things that i really like about the bear especially in this matchup we're gonna get morgvar going and we want to put it on the other side of the five Just one more, sir. And that's going to make the six grow. And then if he tries to do things to these, we also just... The, the Clan Borg War Hunters are very good. I Maybe you want to run three of them. I killed for this. So, notice that the buff didn't hit this. I don't... The buff shouldn't have hit these either. I don't know why that happened. Uh, we're just going to Clan Drum in here. Our shields are our ramparts! Our shields are our ramparts. And then we're going to knock one of these down to make sure that it can't be buffed by any future sergeants. We do want to start getting Morkvar going a little bit. We don't... Okay, that's fine. We have Donar. That should be his only lock. If he has a decoy, he has a decoy. I don't really think we can do much about that. We want a Donar here because if we play the Shieldsmith and then he passes, we're not going to have an opportunity to Donar. Maybe we can get a Reaver Hunter. Reaver Hunter. Ah, D Shackles. D Shackles is an interesting card from a Hensel deck. That's a card I've seen played quite a bit at these ranks. It's Scoia'tael Control. I actually saw some Radovid lists, and I probably will be covering Radovid in the future. I think Radovid is very underrated right now. I also think that Consume Monsters, those are the two decks that I think have a lot of power. 
that are currently being undervalued. I'm just gonna keep the tempo here. Better today. We don't want to really mess around with Ragnarok if we don't have to, and we really want to push round one here so we can press him in round two to force him to use the Reaver Hunter combo before round three. Wow, what's in his hand if he uses an Igni? Or is this just the kind of people who are playing at 1800 these days? I don't know. Out with the crowns. Come on, quick now. I mean, I could be getting matched up really low because I have been playing a lot of experimental decks. That is entirely possible. So we go 5-5 five, five even here, which is perfect. Morgmore comes back as a... I don't... I wish they would show the base at 10. Cool. I had no idea that was going to happen because they don't show the base strength. So, in this particular matchup, we are going to get rid of the Reaver Hunter, is going to be the mulligan there. Ermine's good, but now our Royal Decree is bad, but we can just mulligan that away. So we'll start with the bear. We could just simply pass here and get card advantage, but that's not going to work. We need our opponent to use the Reaver Hunter combo. Now that we don't have a lock, we really want to pressure don't him. Recognize your own mates. Yeah, we really need to pressure him. He has one Reaver Hunter in hand. So, Triss is five. So, this is essentially is at one. This, if he plays the second one, it's going to buff this up one more. And so, I think it's better to Maldrum do this. Maldrum Freyr is patient, but she brooks no hunter. insult. We'll put it here. I promise you a quick death. And we'll shoot this. That way, if he buffs it, we can Triss, and then he has to use Hensel, which is what we this want. This is no anyway. time to whimper. That's exactly, exactly how I wrote it up. How can I help? This essentially makes the last Reaver Hunter in his hand. He has to use the Reaver Hunter and uh, Hensel at the same time, which is really nice. We want him to play as Reaver Hunters this turn. We want him to use that combo. Let's go. And those aren't even in the same row. So we can actually push pretty hard here. So what? Should I pound it into a poker? Should I pound it into a poker? Clear Skies isn't going to do anything unless he gets a. Oh, he got it. But he, he can't get the uh, trio. Us all know. And because he can't get the trio. I mean, these are all going to be really big. Let's go. I don't know how big, but pretty big. Eh, he got ahead of us. But because we're even on cards, we can still press him a little more. We can use Ermion for that. I can help you if you wish. Ooh, decoy. That's not a bad card. Sigdrifa, also not a bad card. Uh, decoy Sigdrifa is better than having the Priestess, I think. Maybe the decoy is just actually worse. Because if we play her and then she just dies, we don't get any decoy value and it just sits in our hand. Whereas the Priestess of Freya is guaranteed to get us some value. Rumors travel faster than the wind. One of the things that... What the heck just happened? I was checking the graveyard. Oh. Neneka? Neneke? I don't actually know. Oh no, it's Dandelion. That's interesting. So... Uh, we have Gremist for next round. I don't think we want to push anymore. He's already used all three Reaver Hunters. I don't know what this last card in his hand could be. I mean, Henselt's basically a dead card, right? And if Henselt's basically a dead card, I think we just play Priestess of Freya here. Because we can always use... Okay, come on. What? What? CDPR, what is going on today? Modern Freyr is patient, but, but she, she brooks, brooks no, no insults. insults. This will give us Should tempo. Work. Should I pound it into a poker? We can see what this last card in his hand is. 
And if it's weak, we can just Sigdrifa for... Okay, so we can get any card he wants in the game. Or any of his minions. Death Mold, maybe? For Alzer's Thunder? Yep. Man, did I call it or did I call it? No, you want a, you want a Thunder. You don't want a Rain. Rain is bad. There is no... There is no scenario where rain can be correct. Please, Thunder. Please. This is embarrassing. Alright. He got it right. He figured it out. So the question is... We just go for it, right? Not only does he only have hen cell, but even if he can beat us, we get a 12 point advantage in around three. Sounds good to me. What do you need? And of course, we're gonna get grimaced. Blood curling roar. And that is a forfeit. So we went 3-0. Sounds a good game as always. Let's see if I went up. Okay, we just did this. I literally just went to 19. Doesn't matter. Either way, CDPR is being glitchy right now. We'll deal with that later. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Joseph Scalise. This is the Noble Gwentry. That was Deck of the Week. If you want to play a budget deck, I highly recommend Crash on Crate. All you need are a couple silvers. You can use all the starting golds. You don't need Zoltan at all. You could play anything you want in that last gold slot. And there's a couple ways to tweak the deck, but I think the core is so strong. So for maybe four, six hundred dust, eight hundred dust, Using your dust on a couple epics to make a good deck is better than getting one legendary, and that's just kind of a rule of the game. So I will see you all next week. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all doing great wherever you are. Peace out.